welcome back to War Thunder and welcome aboard the Chief Mark 10. And this tank is fully upgraded with a very good crew with the expert qualification. And I wanted to try it out, want to go back into higher tier, you know, to see how it's going, you know, what the current meta is. And the current meta is not in favor of this tank. And it's not necessarily the fault of this tank. Let me talk it through and then let's talk about the Challenger 1. But if you are not willing to spend like 10 minutes to wait for my ver final verdict, it's this. The tank can be summarized with one sentence. Here we come. Come at me, bro. Please? Yeah, it's a defensive tank. Um, the tank is good if, when it's hauled down at long range, when it has the AP FSDS shell and when the enemies are coming at it then the tank is kind of good but there are other tanks that can fulfill that role as well now people are now furiously hammering into the comment section still brew still brew still brew armor uh, i got penetrated from the weirdest angles by the weirdest persons it's nothing that i want to rely on my gun bridge also gets hit on a very very regular reliable basis and this is nothing that I want to experience. If I want to rely on my armor, I drive a KV-1. Okay? End of discussion. Um, but no, I'm honest about this. If you expose just a tiny little bit of your hull, in the upper frontal hull, which is very well angled, everybody will punch through, either with heat FS or the ATGMs or AP FSDS or some other nonsense and has some, you know, ricochet shot into the hull of my tank. I've seen it all and the tank is very annoying to drive. It's way too slow and it's way too situational again. Now the Chieftain Mark III when it first came out is a tank that I would have titled way too overpowered. Okay, When the Soviets had nothing really to counter it but they still were spammed hard and for example I was still um, playing arcade and I had well let's let's summarize it that on Poland the spawns in arcade are a bit different and there is no spawn on the other side of the lake so I naturally was going there early on in the game it was possible when then I was hauled down I could literally harvest the enemy Soviet tanks IS-3s, IS-4s all the Soviet medium tanks, including the T-54-47, which was previously a very hard nut to crack, well, I just harvested them big time. But, you know, other additions to the game, even more power creep. The Chief Mark III also was part of the power creep, don't forget about this. And it still was counterable. It still had the lack of mobility, it still had a lower frontal glacis that was paper thin and is still paper thin and is also a weakness that the Chief Mark 10 has and to all intents and purposes from what I've seen on the dev server even more so the Challenger 1 with an additional weak spot right under the gun and even if the tank gets a big rework that is non-historically accurate um, it's still a weak spot because there is no composite armor behind that and it's still pretty flat so you have to change the model you have changed the actual armor layout you have to make it very unhistorical you have to give it a even more powerful shell that can deal with the upcoming spam of the t64b you heard it here first but in all honesty um, I'm not quite sure why people are hyping the tank that much now why is the tank not fit for the matter well not just that it has difficulties to excel in a one versus one if it is ripped out of position sure it has a stabilizer sure it has a nice right of fire sure the stock shell is on paper not that bad but the opposition that you most likely face is just on average the one that you have to deal the most with the T-64 and against this you know to hit the lower plate to disable the gun breach and to do enough damage to blow it up to get it side and so forth well, whereas he can blap you nearly through everywhere now the still brew armor I got penetrated through it multiple times object 120s that are not even in the battle rating range um, you know the mobility is so bad even if you notice a threat up until the point that you turn around 
uh, if the neutral steering is sluggish and slow, the horsepower to ton ratio really supports this uh, issue. Then also if you want to drive forwards, the tank has this weird tendency to just break down to go into neutral steering so you have not won anything but wasted even more time and so forth. So a lot of the battles were decided in the first few minutes for me or in the first minute where I tried to get into position and I always was intercepted as you could see in the clip with the ATGMs on the other side of this map and it just happened more than once. If I tried to go for the other ridge line, then uh, KPZ went around and it's the old story like if you, if you want to compare a panther versus a hellcat. Sure, in theory, but then there is the praxis, you know, the, the actual truth on the battlefield. So this battle is one of the better ones that I had and a not lot of people are playing high tiers. Not a lot of people are really interesting to fill up the matchmaker. It was not played that late at night if I remember correctly. It was 12 o'clock um, GMT if I'm not mistaken. So there was still 30,000 players online. And yeah, I tried to play just now and I wouldn't make a very different commentary to be honest because you cannot push for the objective, you can defend, but the ultimate need to go for the objective, to capture a capture zone, zone to defend it, really makes this tank so incredible vulnerable. And you cannot just retreat into cover like a KPZ-70 or MBT-70. You cannot just really stand there and take the hits like a T-64 and hope that your opposition is stuck because then you have a good laugh at them most of the time. And also the T-64A, well, the lower plate seems to be a lower target or a smaller target rather, more difficult to hit. And even then you mostly do not critical or fatal damage with a penetration. Unlike on the Chief Mark 10, it just comes together all by it and um, it's kind of annoying to be honest. I would love to like this tank, I would love to love it to be honest, but there are way too many issues. And then again, tell me why you guys are that hyped about the Challenger 1. Because it's nothing but a beefed up Chief Mark 10. So does it have better mobility? Sure. How much better? Good enough to rival a KPZ or a Leopard 2K or a T64B? Mm. Does it have really a better lower frontal plate? Mm. Not really. Is the gun outstandingly better? Um, no. It's kind of the same gun. So what's the selling point of this tank with the Leopard 2K? It has awesome mobility and on the test server at least the heat DFS shell was an absolute monstrosity that could melt itself through everything that I faced in the T64B in the test drive. Now everything is subject to change from the dev server. That is what I know myself. But in all honesty, Britain is, is experiencing at higher tiers a problem that is um, outstanding just as well or is just as outstanding as with the Germans at 6.7 or 5.7 and from that onward up until you reach the Leopard. The lack of mobility, the lack of flanking support, the lack to secure the flanks. You need to hope that you are teamed up with either America or Germany to uh, have some Kampfpanzer 70 MBT-70 support to secure your flank. And then you can play the defensive tank that is camping. But other than that it is not effective, it's also not fun. And this is one of the big criteria why I want to play a tank. I want to be competitive, I want to have fun, I want my skill to be the decisive factor to make a tank work. And sure, you can have those battles where the enemy is charging you like numbnuts. Sure, the enemy can secure the capture zones without you and you're just having, harvesting the kills. And there are enough gameplays out there that I've seen and I have seen it myself in the very beginning. But it's not the average battle. This is the better average battle. Where so far I survived, where so far I defended the capture zone 
and I was not pressured. And also, I didn't get noticed by Cast. I have no real defense against Cast, to be honest. I have no heavy machine gun, and as good as the gun is, shots like these are outstandingly rare. Yeah, that was a critical hit. I guess that was into the rudder of the, I guess, SG6. And uh, the follow up shot misses by. Actually, not that much, but now he goes into a turn and I still try to shoot him down, but with not that much success. The damage is already done. So he goes into a turn, I miss my shot again, and at this point in time, I'm playing SPA, and uh, yeah. Chief Mark 10 is not the most effective at that, except if you get the first shot in, as you saw in the beginning clip, and wow, that is a really acrobatic flat spin. 10 out of 10, but to be honest, 1 out of 10 for the landing? Okay, 2 out of 10 for the nice explosion, but other than that, you know, okay, jokes aside. So, Chief Mark 10, it's not really the tank's fault, it's the meta, it's that the situation that you are built for, that you are designed for, from the Chief Mark 5 and 3, also to the Mark 10, rarely arises, you know, you rarely have to engage enemies while you are hauled down. And the uh, challenge 1 is kind of the very same. So I know it's a very iconic vehicle, I know that it has seen combat and that it has somewhat proven itself but other than this, I think the Challenger 1 also holds the title for the longest combat kill in a tank versus tank engagement. But um, then some of my secret document guys actually told me that even the crew admitted that it was pure luck. Um, over 4 kilometers, if I'm not mistaken. That's quite some distance, to be honest. But yeah, I'd, I'm not really looking forward to it. The Chief Mark 3 was the tank that really sold me for this if you are fighting inferior vehicles such as the IS-4, the IS-3 that have comparable mobility where their armor is not really standing up against your stock gun even back in the days even Hash was super effective and this is no longer given. You have so many counters, you can't defend yourself against cast. The lack of mobility, the lack of effective all around armor or even frontal armor in the complete package makes the tank struggling on the battlefields of War Thunder. And this was one of the better battles that I had in like 20 of them. So, and I also didn't have fun. So tell me guys, where is the hype coming from? I have no idea. Because I want to like those tanks. Because they look good, look good they have some his history and so forth. But yeah, this is the result. And that's all that I can say. I tried. I had some success. Mostly defeat. And to be honest, I would rather play a Leopard than this tank. That's it for me, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening, please give this video a like, that subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll see each other on the battlefields of War Thunder.